Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the February 2023 sheet load of cards printable. We do have a couple special tips this month so I hope you'll keep watching to learn about those and see my first set. I'm super excited to be here for today's process video, which is all about the February 2023 sheet load of cards. We're going to be making 12 cards today with just two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper, five and a half pieces of cardstock for matting, and six pieces to yield those 12 card bases. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the February 2023 printable and you want to do that, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked in that description box below. And don't forget when you're done with my video today, make sure to check out what my team of collaborators has created this month. Now we have been using a hashtag to kind of drive that hop here on YouTube, but we've noticed that it hasn't been working the best. So do go ahead and try the hashtag in the title, but if that isn't working, a couple other things you can do are I will add the videos as soon as possible to the playlist, which is linked in the description box. And I will also have a link to everybody's channels and Instagram accounts down there. Hopefully with one of those ways, you'll be able to go see what they created and leave them some love. Now, if you're going to create with this month's sheet load of cards, don't forget about the two hashtags at the top. If you share here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok. Now you can also send in a card for the end of the month video. So in the description box, I do have a link to the show us your sheet load guidelines video. I always love to see what you're creating. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, this month we do have some extra special tips that you'll want to watch the full process for. The first one is going to be how to get your sentiment pieces correct, whether you're a channel member and you use that bonus SVG for this month, or if you're going to try to find a four inch circle to cut up into quarters. The next big tip is going to be how to get your four pieces here in the background without running out of pattern paper. In yesterday's video, I gave you some close up looks at the products I'll be using today. I will mention them later on and tell you about other tools or products I bring in. But if you want more details, check out the debut or keep watching. Now, if I ever leave you with any questions, you're free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. I'm going to get started today by showing you how to cut your pattern papers. Now, usually this is pretty self-explanatory and I can kind of speed through this while I do a voiceover, but because you need every inch from top to bottom of this 12 inches, I want to show you how to easily cut these three and a half by one inch pieces to make sure that they are all uniform. Now you can go ahead and try to cut one inch at a time. Just make sure you don't do what I call generous cuts. Normally when I cut my pattern papers, I will use, if I like want to cut two inches, I will actually put my paper right at the right of that line instead of right to the left. So it actually cuts just a little bit bigger than the two inches. But if you do that for all of these small pieces, you're gonna wind up with a 12th one that is way too small. Now these might vary from piece to piece and you shouldn't be able to tell, but I think you probably could tell if three were one inch and one was three quarters of an inch. So what I suggest, and I have it typed out down here, is to cut these in three and a half by four inch sections first, and then I'll show you how to cut them down to get them more uniform. So to get started, I'm going to cut four columns two that are three and a half inches wide and two that are two and a quarter inches wide. Then 
there is a very thin strip left and later we'll see if we can't decorate the inside of our cards with these and use up all of the paper. For the next cuts, you're going to want to get your three and a half inch wide strips. And we're going to go ahead and cut each of these into three pieces that are four inches tall. Again, I'm not going to use a generous cut because I need all 12 inches. So if you look here at my trimmer, instead of putting it to the other side of the black line where you can't see it, I'm going to cut it where it's just to the left. And then we're left with that third one that is four inches tall too. Now with each of these, we're gonna turn them into four pieces. And I would suggest then when we're done cutting it down that you keep these four together for your final cards. Now for this again, no generous cuts. And because my trimmer has measurements to the left and right, what I'm gonna do is the first one, I'm gonna center it between the one inch mark on the left and the three inch mark on the right. Now for the second cut, I'll center it between the one and the two inches. And finally for the last one, I'll center it between the one and the one. And because it's hard for me to get my fingers in there and hold it down, I'm gonna bring in my Scotch removable tape and I'll use this for all of the cards today. And I'm just going to get it lined up between those two. Put the piece of tape down there to hold it. And then I can go ahead and cut those and the tape removes without tearing any of that pattern paper. Again, I'm gonna keep all four of these together and you can see here, they are all the same size. Now for the second piece, I'll show you what to do if you don't have measurements on both sides of your cut line. This is really going to be just cutting one inch at a time, making sure not to do generous cuts. So for the first one, I'm just going to line it up on the left side of the three inch mark. Then I'm going to scoot it down to be on the left side of the two inch mark. And finally, scoot it down once more so it's at the left of the one inch mark. And I'm going to use that same piece of tape to hold it in place while I cut it. And once again, we have four pieces that are super close to the exact same size. You are definitely not going to notice any difference as you spread them across or from top to bottom on your card front. I'm just going to continue cutting these and then I'll show you how to cut those two and a quarter inch strips. Now I'm going to show you how to cut the two and a quarter inch wide strips for pattern paper piece B. Just like with the first strips, we're going to cut each piece into three pieces that are four inches tall, but then there won't be any more cutting needed for this. Again though, because we do need that full 12 inches, make sure that you don't do generous cuts, that you cut them right at four, or maybe like I do, just right to the left of your four inch cut line. So here's a look at all the pieces you'll get out of one sheet. This is actually 30 pieces. So I realize it's a lot to keep track of. I would just suggest keeping the little pieces offset so you can grab the four for each card. Now let's go ahead and cut that second piece of paper just like the first. While I work on cutting that second piece of pattern paper, I wanted to stop by with a little shout out. In the month of January, I had some channel members reach one year of channel membership. Thank you so much everyone for supporting me here each month. You keep me crafting here on YouTube and sheet load of cards free for all.
If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. Now we're going to cut cardstock one, which you will need three sheets of coordinating cardstock. I'm going to start by cutting these into columns that are three and three quarters inches wide, and then these will get rotated and cut to five and a half inches tall. Now there is some extra on the right, and later on I actually used some of that to decorate the inside of my cards. I found recently if I try to use up my scrap pattern paper and cardstock right away, it gets used quicker and I get to decorate the insides. Just a reminder that you don't have to write down or remember any of these dimensions. They are all on that free printable that you can get in yesterday's debut video. I brought in a couple more pieces of the lovely lavender cardstock for CS2. Now it does call on the printable for one and a half sheets, but all I had so far of this were full sheets. So you'll see that after I cut this into columns that are two and a half inches wide, on that second sheet, I do have about half of that left over for later projects. Once those are cut in those strips, I cut them in half to four and a quarter inches tall. Next up would be CS3, which it says you need three four inch circles, but if you are a channel member, you do have access to a bonus SVG. And that is actually what I use for my cards today. Before I got started, I set 12 up on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and cut those out of some white cardstock. If you are a channel member, make sure to check out the membership tab on my channel to download the SVG. All right, now that I've shown you using that bonus SVG, I wanted to kind of slow it down and tell you some other options if you're not a channel member or you don't have an electronic cutter. As I show in the cutting guides, you can die cut three four inch circles, whether that's with a metal die or if you do have an electronic cutter and you can just cut yourselves from four inch circles. Now, if you don't have dies, you could always find something in your house that is about four inches in diameter, trace around that and hand cut them. For today, I'm gonna show you using this set from iCrafter, I measured the largest circle and it is right at four inches. Now, if you have some circle dies, but they're not quite four inches, that's okay. You just might have to adjust the size of your sentiment. And when you do your cuts, make sure you know what half of yours is. So what I'm going to do is go off camera and cut a circle from this largest die so I can show you how to cut it down. So here is my four inch circle. Again, if you don't have one quite this size, you'll just wanna figure out how wide it is and then cut it in half. So since mine is four inches wide, I'm gonna cut it two inches every time I do cut. Now yours might not have a decorative edge. That is completely okay. This is just the die I had that was four inches. So I'm gonna bring it to my cutter and I'm gonna line it so it is spaced or it's centered between the two inches on this side and the two inches on the left. Now, again, if you don't have measurements over here, you'll just want this up against a two inch mark. Now, since I do have a decorative edge, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit so it cuts between those openings. Now that we have these, we're gonna line them up again with this right edge at the two inches. And here we have that same shape for the card front. You'll see here it fits just like the SVG file. So again, there's different ways you can do this. Make sheet load work with what you own. For my card bases today, I use six pieces of edible eggplant cardstock, and because I wanted top fold cards, I cut each of these pieces in half to four and a quarter inches. Now you could definitely fold this by hand, but it is pretty thick cardstock, so I brought in my score buddy, put a score line there on the five and a half inches, and then folded it and reinforced it with the bone folder. Now all of the pieces are cut so we can start assembling our cards. The first thing we're gonna do is take cardstock one or CS1 
and the sets of four pattern papers that we cut. Now for this first card, I was going to show you how you can do this a couple ways. You can lay out your pattern paper so the pattern flows from top to bottom, or you can mix and match it. Well, I was not being careful enough, so after I added adhesive to the second one, I actually put that on the card front wrong. But I will show you later one that flows better. To get your pattern papers onto the cardstock, you are going to put one at the very top, centered left to right, aligned with the top of CS1. Then one goes right below that, about an eighth of an inch. And finally, the last two pieces go at the bottom, kind of mirrored to what you have done at the top. Now you're always welcome to spread these out more if you want, or if you want that eighth of an inch border at the top and bottom of this piece. This is just a jumping off point and you can definitely make these your own. For the next card, which I'm going to use that second pattern, I did not worry at all about if the pattern flowed from top to bottom. This pattern is a little bit more conducive to that since it's more of just like a geometric design. I will show you a close up look at both of these together here in a second. And then I am going to finally do one where I have the flowers flow from top to bottom. Now I will tell you, I finished most of these off screen and for the florals, I just mixed and matched. I did not try to figure out how they flowed because I will tell you it took a lot of extra time. And in the end here, which again, I'm gonna give you a little close up of the two next to each other. I don't think you can really tell that one goes in the same pattern order and one is kind of mixed and matched. I continued hearing these strips to their mats until all 12 were finished. The next step in the process goes much quicker. You are going to mat together CS2 and pattern paper B. Those are the smaller of the cardstock and pattern paper pieces. Now these just get matted so there's a nice even border all the way around the edges. Now you're going to bring back in your card bases and we're going to add these matted pieces to the front. I did switch up the patterns so you have the opposite pattern going with its background and I'm going to start by adding the larger one centered on the card front. Now this will fill the card base top to bottom and you have about a quarter of an inch I think to the left and right of that. Now for the smaller piece, which I am just going to adhere flat down, you could definitely put some foam tape on this. I am gonna place it on that center strip, but more toward the right like the sketch shows. Once again, this is a place where you can play around with the placement of yours. You could center it, you could put it to the left. It is totally up to you. I continued adding these pieces to the card front and I did do most of this off camera. Also, while I was off camera working on this, I decorated the inside. I put a piece of white cardstock for the personal message and I used up all of the remaining pattern paper and some of the cardstock scraps to decorate the inside. For my sentiment today, I am using the word hi from the Oh Yes You Did stamp set from Tailored Expressions and I'm going to be using Gina K Designs Fresh Asparagus Ink. Since there was some green in the pattern paper, I thought this would go well. I will be setting this up in my mini misty so I can just get the stamp set up once and then get all 12 of my sentiment pieces stamped quickly. I tried to center the word high as best as possible in that area and I made sure that each time before I stamped that my sentiment piece, that corner was all the way down in the right hand corner of the misty. I did decide to switch out my big ink pad for my cube of the same color just because sometimes I find when I ink up something small on the misty with a larger pad it gets all over the door. So I was just hoping to keep things a little cleaner by doing this. In no time at all I had my 12 sentiments stamped and while I was off camera finishing those 
I use this die set, which was a coordinating product for last month's Spellbinders card kit of the month, and I cut some of the kind of ferny pieces to decorate the front of the card. I did 12 of three different shapes. And for some added dimension, I added foam tape to the back of each of my sentiment pieces. Now it's time to put together our focal points and finish these cards. I placed my high sentiment where it would eventually go, and then I kind of arranged the three die cut pieces behind that. When I thought it looked good, I brought in my fine tip glue bottle, added some of the glue to the back of each of the green pieces, and got those adhered down. Now I didn't focus on getting glue on the stems because once I peel the release paper from the sentiment, that will help hold those in place. I continued adding the focal points to each of the card fronts, and then off camera, I ended up adding a trio of gold circle stickers from Love From Lizzie Designs. And here are some close up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the February 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go see what my collaborators have created and leave them some love. Here on YouTube, you can use the hashtag in the title or the playlist or channel link list in the description box. And for Instagram, I also have a link to the search over there as well as all of their Instagram accounts. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.